Today, we are going to talk to two friends that we have met through this amazing business. Um, they are both women in network marketing who were invited into the business by their daughters. In our effort to bring clarity to the topic of network marketing, we would be remiss if we did not address the dynamics that occur between network marketers and their family and friends. Just about anyone who has been in network marketing themselves or who has a family member in network marketing or friend has probably been on one side or the other of this scenario. Lots of times though, approaching family and friends doesn't go so well. Mostly I think because uh, of my own experience, there's a lack of understanding about the business. Um, so let's dive into today's discussion. First of all, I'm gonna share a little bit about both of these beautiful ladies. Deb Reimer is a retired medical social worker who lives in Ontario, Canada. She's a wife, mom, and grandma who loves to travel and meet new people all over the world. Deb loved working at a children's treatment center, but got tired of the daily schedule and politics of working in the medical system. Despite both she and her husband having pension plans, she didn't feel ready to retire completely, and she wanted to have extra funds to do the things they'd worked so hard to do in retirement. Network marketing turned out to be a surprising option that she'd never previously considered. Sharon Seaton has been an RN for almost 35 years with certifications in home health and hospice care. Sharon uses her nursing skills to work virtually, so she and her husband are able to split their time between their homes in Colorado and Costa Rica. Tough life. Sharon's yeah. husband <laughs> is retired, and because she's 15 years younger than he is, retirement is a ways off for her. As a nurse, Sharon took care of people facing the effects of end-stage chronic illnesses like diabetes and heart disease, and she knew that many of these people might not be suffering if they had embraced healthier habits and better nutrition when they were younger. A little over a year ago, her husband came home from a visit with their daughter, excited about partnering with her in her business. He showed Sharon how they could build their business together. Sharon got excited too, because it brought all of her interests, skills, and education from nursing, along with her own personal health journey, together to help people live a healthier lifestyle. Plus, their network marketing business is something they can work together and do as part of their lives. This business will also allow Sharon to join her husband in retirement sooner. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I just love, I mean, you both uh, exemplify really being all about serving others in your careers and in your family and raising your children. Uh, and now you get to make a business of that in a, in a way of sorts. Um, why don't you each just start off? Let's start, uh, let's start Deb with you. And then Sharon, uh, we'll have you share a little bit about what's your story. How did you get introduced to network marketing? What kind of thoughts did you have? Did you have any impressions about the business before you heard about it? What interested you and ultimately what made you decide to do it? Um, well, as Jeanine indicated, I was introduced to the products when my daughter started into the business, and um, I was just pretty amazed at first about how well they worked. So basically, that was my introduction, and neither she or I had any thought of me doing the business. It was actually totally, didn't even occur to her, it didn't even occur to me. But I found I kept sharing them with other people. I kept telling other people about my experiences. And I got to thinking, well, maybe this would be a way my daughter was doing really well. I thought maybe this would be a way that I could earn a little extra travel money. Um, I really didn't look at it as, as very seriously. I wasn't really into sales, but I loved educating people about products. I loved sharing about uh, healthy uh, options for people and solutions. And so that was really how I, I got started and naturally kind of sales followed. I enjoyed meeting customers. I enjoyed offering support, much like, again, I, those that are in the healthcare profession, we've done all our lives. So I love supporting people and helping them with solutions for things. And I love meeting with other people through the business. I thought that was a really just a lot of fun. I love my job as a social worker. But as you said, um, Janine, as you mentioned, I was just getting tired of the everyday grind. At 59, I was like, I'm ready to retire. But my husband and I really looked at our financial situation, and I think a lot of people in retirement were not really ready, even though we had pensions, but our incomes had been capped. We were at the top of our grids. We'd had all these 
you know, limits on cost of increase or cost of living increases the last few years. And so we really weren't at a position that I could retire early and do the things that we really enjoy doing. And, you know, we, you work all your life for 40 years plus, and we just didn't have those options. Um, so I set a goal to retire early. Um, my goal was to make up the difference between my pre and my post retirement income so that we wouldn't have to change our lifestyle. We wouldn't really have to change the way we were doing things. And I thought that's an initial goal. So I reached that goal when I was 62 and was able to retire three years earlier. And my only regret is that I didn't start earlier. Um, and then I could have retired earlier. <laughs> so that's my story. Oh my goodness, Deb. I, I love what you shared about your, well, first of all, when products work and you become a fan of the products, it does make the possibility of sharing them with others and earning income on them so much more realistic and achievable. So I'm sure that your daughter was delighted to hear about your decision to join her on the business side as well. Had either of you done any network marketing before, or was this the first time you'd ever done anything? Like I that? had many years ago when my husband had gone back to school to get a degree, uh, another degree. And uh, so I did it as a little part-time thing. And again, really, I just bought more of the product than I actually really made any profit at it. I didn't, you know, it was fun, but I didn't really... I didn't really see the potential. I don't think I really understood the potential at that point. So basically it was a little extra income to help us get him through school without any debt. And that was um, basically once I had done that, I just kept using the products, but I didn't do anything more with it. Well, I mean, here's to you for, and we talk about this a lot in this podcast about your first experience doesn't have to be your last experience. You know, you have grown and developed as a different person. You've learned more uh, and, and, you know, maybe the alignment with the company or the product or the message has changed for you. And so here's to you for being open-minded enough to say, well, maybe this is, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying these products. Maybe I should look into the other side of it. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing it. And I love that your first goal was a, was it was a like a like a gap it was filling in that gap between pre and post retirement income so that you would be able to maintain your lifestyle and that's awesome especially for the baby boomers and that's one of the reasons that we did a podcast about the top 10 reasons this business is perfect for baby boomers so if you haven't heard that one look for it and uh thank you so much deb for sharing that sharon how about you how'd you get started um how were you, were you new to network marketing and 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 what, you know, what did you think about it? Tell us about your story. Sure. So um, actually it starts in 2008 with the same company I'm with now, but um, our daughter uh, got started in this business. And in 2008, we just wanted to be supportive of her and join her. And I had a 10 year old son at the time also. And I thought, well, we'll just start this business and it'll be his business. He was really good at selling you know, Boy Scout popcorn, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so what I learned from this in 2008, all we did is a couple of email blasts that was really before cell phones and everything of course. We had very many cell phones anyway. And uh, we, we got, you know, people interested and we began to have conversations and it was that simple. And um, life got in the way. We didn't continue to pursue it. Of course, you know, my son being my son at 10, didn't really get it at all. And I didn't have the like what you said, Deb, I didn't have the vision of what this could do if I'd only kept it up since 2008. Whew. But anyway, flash forward to 2019, um, my husband had gotten back from a visit with the same daughter um, in 2019 and really got re-energized and really excited about the idea of us doing this business. Because we live a two-country lifestyle, because he's retired and I'm not, there's just a lot of things that a regular job gets in the way of, you know, um, have to figure out how to have our fun around my work, right? And I'd rather um, make my work fit around my fun. So um, in 2019, he came home. I was kicking and screaming, frankly, because I had just never really thought that I could make money. I thought it would take a lot more of my time that I already didn't feel like I had. And um you know, it had been sort of a hobby for a lot of my young mom friends back in the day. So long story short, he was really able to paint a picture for me of how this could work for us. 
and how we could work together towards the goal of me being retired with him. And that was exciting. I already believed in this product. Um, you know, we, we already had been on a health journey. I had already um, proven to myself, you know, that, that I had trust in this company and I had trust in my daughter. So long story short, that's what happened. I signed up and she has been a great mentor. She has, you know, really helped me continue to paint this picture about how we can grow this business and how we can just enjoy our lives while we're sharing this cool stuff. That is awesome. That's awesome. Well, Sharon, let's talk a little bit about uh, about about what you what you were talking about there, but working with your daughter. What's it like to work with family? So interesting story. She's actually my stepdaughter, and I met her dad when she was eighteen. So we've always lived far apart and haven't really, um, you know, gotten to know each other on a deep level. And through this last year, almost year and a half now, I mean, it's just been amazing. I didn't know I was going to tear up, but it's just been so cool to get to know her, what a wonderful woman she is, um, how smart she is, and she's just been been terrific. So for me, it's been 100% blessing. Um, And I will say on the other side, on my times of discouragement, when I've thought of quitting, I don't want to let her down. (laughs) So, so, you know, that's you know, because there everything in everything you do that's new and you're learning, you can get yes. discouraged. And I'm like, oh, I, you know, I don't really need to do this. I think I'll just put it aside. But I don't want to disappoint her. I, you know, talk to her. She remotivates me as my mentor, and it's just kind of been really cool. Oh my goodness, that makes me tear up too. That is so <laughs> I didn't sweet. That. That I is so hello criers. I'm always <laughs> crying. That is so sweet. I love that. That's so sweet and so true. I mean, you have something special that you're building together and encouraging each other with. I'm sure that if we were to talk to her, she might say something similar that how much closer she's grown to know you and love you and, and learn from you. And also that sometimes on her bad days, because building a business is tough. It doesn't matter right. where you are or what experience you have have or what product or what company, it takes a lot of chutzpah to get out there and make something happen. And yeah. I'm sure that she thinks twice too on her bad moments of, um, I'm not going to let Sharon down and we're in it together. So that's awesome. Deb, yeah. how about you? Is there a perspective on building with family that you want to share? Yeah, I think uh, some similar things for sure. Um, but also I think one of the neat things has been that it's been awesome to see my daughter blossom and grow with this business um, and find kind of her passion. And also that we've been able to travel, we've been able to attend events together. Um, and and that's really cool. We, we had possibly been looking at going to Europe this year because we have a team there, but we're not traveling right now. So that's not, probably not happening and events aren't happening. But um, I think we're also, it's also to, really cool to be there to support each other in our accomplishments. And when we've reached certain milestones, it, it's been just wonderful to be at an event, to be able to share in that with each other, which is awesome. Um, one thing I, I, I think that's important, I've tried to be cognizant of in terms of um, it is to kind of be independent myself, that I, I've really tried, she's my upline, so I've really tried not to depend on her to try and um, build my own business using my strengths and skills, and certainly she's there and she's supportive, and I, you know, try and support her, and I believe in her, but but we, we I think we, you, you know, you still need to develop your own um, sense of autonomy and your own sense of building your own uh, organization. And I think that that's important too, is kind of to respect each other and not to rely on each other on overly much. So I think that that's also really important. Um, and, and just, yeah, it's been great. Uh, it's been really wonderful. So, so um, I'd like to talk to you guys about what kinds of objections um, you hear and, and, uh, encounter from people. I don't, I don't know if you're building mostly with people that are in this age group, in our age group, or um, maybe it just, it, it's a little bit of everybody, but why don't we start with you, Sharon? What kind of objections do you encounter? Time, I think, is a huge one. Time and not wanting to bother people or, you know, sell to my friends, but time is probably the one I hear the most. There's, you know, so much going on that 
something new is hard no matter what the new thing is and no matter how much I, you know, have things in place to, you know, to mentor or to, um, to precept somebody through the process, still mentally until you start to do it, it's a big obstacle of, of something new. So, um, and I would say all of the builders I have, all the people that I work with pretty much are in our age group. So um, I have a couple that are younger, but mostly our age group. And I think even though now we're empty nesters, it seems like we'd have more time. Um, life seems to fill itself in, doesn't it? So, mm -hmm. so did so since you have been working with people in our age group, did you encounter a lot of um, objections or uh, myths, or you know, the stigma of network marketing? Oh yes, I've had you know people just say no, not interested in that. I went to a party once. I thought I was being a guest, and yeah, they sold me something and. Certainly that happened to me as well back, you know, that was quite a while ago now, but, you know, I think the business has changed and that people don't behave that way anymore, at least nobody that I know, but, you know, 20 years ago it did. And, you know, I remember one time I had uh, somebody come over, so I want to come over and, and visit with you. And, and I'm like, I knew they sold this product with this company. I'm like, I would love to have you come over, but I am not interested in that, please. And they came over and sat at my table and did an entire presentation for an hour. <laughs> I'm like, did you not hear me? Anyway, but, but that doesn't happen anymore as far as I know. And, um, and, but it's hard to overcome people's experiences, you know? And I have one family member who has, I mean, he just violently against the whole thing. So we just don't even talk about it right now. Um, but he just thinks it, it um, people spend more money than they make and um, takes more time than worth the value. And there's nothing I've been able to do to explain otherwise to this particular person. Yeah, so. yeah. So how about you, Deb? Uh, so all of the above again <laughs> with Sharon. Um, I think a couple other things working in the health field. Um, when I started doing it, I was actually really surprised that people challenged me about the products. And um, again, because I, a lot of my friends are in that field, a lot of them were really skeptical. Uh, so it was actually interesting, but what it did is it made me do my research. It made me really delve into the company and the products and make sure uh, that there was evidence to back them up. And that was um, really helpful for me in the long run. It actually made me believe more. And, uh, but at first it, it actually <laughs> took me a little bit back that people were challenging me. Um, and secondly was again, the preconceived notions. I think a lot of people in our age category for sure have had that negative experience where people have kind of, you know, almost dishonestly invited them to something and not, and not told them what it's about. And I, again, I think that's a rare, if anything, um, these days, but that stigma has stayed around, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, the comment, oh, it's one of those pyramid schemes, like we've all heard that. Um, it, but that unfortunately lumps all network marketing companies together. And I think that's really unfortunate because it closes people off. Like you say, Sharon, you can't, um, you, you, it doesn't really matter what you say, they've got that in their head. And it's really hard to get past that sometimes um, and, and have them really take an honest look at what the company's structure is, how it works and how it's very similar to other companies. So I think that's unfortunate. So those are probably two other objections. I work with a variety, I actually, my team is really varied. I have uh, some builders my own age and some that are younger. So um, just kind of nice, I get to work with a bunch of different ages. So, um, so Sharon, what, what is something that you would really wish people understood about this business? Um, that it's not complicated. I think people tend to overcomplicate it. And, you know, it's just really about finding something that you love and trust and appreciate and sharing about it. And um, the other thing is, is that it doesn't just happen you do actually need to talk to people and to share with them what it is, you know, that you're selling because at the end of the day, you are selling something and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
but there's a lot of things, a lot of companies and products out there to represent. So hopefully you're choosing something that you would share, even if you weren't being paid for it. Exactly. So how about you, Deb? What, what would you like for people to understand about this business? Um, a, a couple of things. One, I think, is just to understand and be open to hearing about the business opportunity, that it is legitimate and that they're, the MLM companies today are great companies. They offer high quality products in most cases and um, really great compensation plans. So I just, I just love people to be more open to hear about that and compare it to a regular business model. Um, MLM companies promote differently through reps rather than more like word of mouth, mouth like uh, recommending a restaurant versus traditional advertising kinds of things. And I just wish people would take a look at that. Um, I think the other thing is um, the fact that your income really isn't capped, that you can, if you put your time and effort into it, you can make more money than your boss, which certainly in healthcare <laughs> didn't happen, you know, unless you worked your way up or had a promotion or whatever, it didn't matter if you gave 150%, like I think a lot of healthcare workers do, you, you just stayed where you were. So I think the fact that you do have the ability to keep it as a few extra dollars a month, or to make it more and, and that you're not limited by a structure or by a company. Um, I think something else is that so often we hear, um, oh, you know, get into MLM. We have six figure earners. That seems to be a big thing. We, you know, and I think that's a little bit misleading for people. I think, again, not everybody wants or needs to be a six figure earner. I'm not. Um, I feel that um, that might discourage people because I think really you can get into um, MLM and network marketing and, fee and, and make uh, whatever you decide is your goal. I think for me, it was initially that making up uh, when I started with the company six years ago, it was making up that, that gap in the income. But what happened is now I'm starting to see more potential. I'd like to do more, I'd like to give more. Um, it's allowed us to have that extra income to build our new home, to have be able to do some upgrades, to take a retirement trip to Australia, New Zealand and, and uh, Hawaii, which we probably wouldn't have been able to do or do as well as we did um, without that extra income. So now um, I would like to do more. I would like to be able to do more with my family. I would like to be able to give more. Um, so I think not limiting yourself, but knowing that you don't have to fit into that category that, or that you don't have to feel like network marketing is only about making um, that large, large income. So I, I just, I feel like people need to know that, that it, it's really can be what you want to make it and what your goals, what goals you set. I love that you're mentioning that. I think that it's part of the hype that, that comes along with this business. And I don't think we as network marketers, I don't think we um, highlight enough the people that are, you know, making the income that they want to make and not everybody's goals are the same. So I, I'm really glad that you mentioned that it is kind of, it can be whatever you want it to be. Yes, I agree with that. And I, I find that comes along with sort of the, maybe the more masculine energy around this business um, versus the feminine energy. And I, I love that, uh, that you're a living proof example of um, what, you know, success is not the same for all of us. And, and it changes, you know, what is, what feels successful and accomplished today is not the way you're going to feel a year from now um, because life changes, it's fluid. And so it's okay for supplemental income or even full-time income to vary with that. But we've been so conditioned by showing up for a job and being an employee and making a certain amount of a check and having that budget that it's hard to embrace something that is less, less, less defined. Um, it doesn't mean it's any less successful. It's just less precise or, or like you said, it doesn't have to be the big numbers to be successful for you. So, so you kind of touched on this, Deb, and I'm going to start with you first, but what, what would you say that, is there something else that you didn't already mention that you appreciate most about this business? Um, 
One is that it fits with my values. I think coming out of a healthcare profession, um, I'm still able to serve others. I love it when people contact me and ask for some help in finding a solution to something that just kind of fits with what I've done and I enjoy doing. And I, and I really enjoy that. I love the flexibility. Um, I think the fact that we can, my husband retired four or five years before I did. And the fact that we can, well, normally we can travel <laughs> or you know pick up and I can do this from anywhere. I can sit in a lap with my laptop on a beach, literally, and, in, and be um, able, as long as I have Wi-Fi, I can work from anywhere in the world. And I love that. Um, I love the travel. I love the people I've met on this journey, like you lovely ladies. I've made some amazing friends and um, really all over the world, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm grateful for that residual income, the fact that it keeps coming. This past year, we had so much happen with we had to move, we had to live temporarily in another house and then move again with building a new house. My husband had some health challenges. And so I definitely wasn't putting 100% into my business this past year. And um, I still got paid every month. And that was amazing. And I, you know, now I can look forward and say, okay, I've got goals for this year. This year is a, a whole different story. And um, it, it's, you really can pick and choose, but to know you have that residual income, and I'll, I'll give a tiny little story. My mom is in a long-term care home here in Canada, and my dad worked in businesses all his life where he had just sales income. And so they had some savings, but not a huge amount, but he had residual income from that sales. And thank goodness, my mom is in a lovely private room in a lovely home. And um, that probably wouldn't be possible if it hadn't been for that income that still keeps on coming for her at 88. Mm -hmm. um, it's gone down. But um, and so when you think about that, um, we don't always know what's in our future. We don't always know what to expect. And a lot of care things, a lot of things as we get older cost a lot of money. So having, knowing that you're building a future, you're building um, an income that's not just for now is I think really important. Wow. Well, that is what a touching story. And that, that is good, good to hear and, and know that you're building something for the future, um, which is different than an employee mindset. So I'm going to stay with you for a second about on the, uh, on more of the learning side, what's something that you had to learn? Well, I, I think I've definitely had to learn to grow personally. I've learned to have to really get to know what my strengths are. Um, I've, I've had to um, learn how to lead and support others. I think my own confidence, especially publicly, getting out there publicly, um, either presenting or even doing something like this, public speaking, um, those are all areas I've had to learn and gain confidence in. Um, so I think to me, that is, you know, tacky stuff, certainly at, at my age learning, I'm still learning. Um, but so there's lots of things I've had to learn, but I'm so grateful for that. I think at our age, and I think heading into retirement, that that, even from a health perspective, is really, uh, and my social work background, from a mental health perspective, having a focus, having something and a passion that you enjoy and, and being able to learn, I think is um, actually a real bonus. Yes, yes. I think learning keeps us young, too. Um, so uh, we are all learning. So Sharon, how about you? What is what is something that you appreciate uh, the most about your business? And what have you had to learn in order to, to be successful? I think so. I'm still pretty new in this, I would say, you know, it's been a year, a little over a year and where I've taken it seriously and been really focused on it. Um, and it, I can't spend a ton of time because I do have a full-time job. So what I've, I don't know, what I've learned, I think, is that, um, that I'm still learning, that I still have a lot to learn. <laughs> and transitioning from a corporate world to a world like uh, of network marketing, um, I have to do some mind shifts for myself. So in leadership in the corporate world, I, I really had the appearance of having authority, but I had no authority because I had the corporation behind me that was um, really telling me exactly what I could and couldn't do. And so in this business, it's much more like a partnership with anybody that I'm working with. And I just feel a little more empowered to support people. And I'm looking forward to see how, how 
I grow in that area. I'm looking forward to seeing how that develops and it's trial and error. And sometimes it's, I fall into old habits and that's just not gonna work. And I'm, I'm happy to be learning that. Well, very good. Is there something you appreciate the most? For me, the, that I get these great and amazing products paid for by my income. <laughs> so to me right now, it's kind of where I'm at is that I am, you know, making enough where I get to just really have these cool products and it's not making a dent into my income. Good. So, so Deb, um, what is the most important factor to, to achieving success in this business, do you think? And I know there's a whole bunch, but what would you say? Um, I think one of the most things is to stick with it. I think a lot of people feel it's, it's something that happens overnight. And I think that's not like a traditional business or sometimes people have been involved in like retail or whatever, where it's basically you sell the products, you earn income and the more you sell, the more you make. It's not like that. And so it does take time to build a business, to uh, build relationships, to uh, work with a team to support a team, which is awesome, um, and to see them grow. So I think the fact that most people, I think, quit too early, they don't see the, um, the benefits early enough. And sometimes it's hard to, to get them to see that. So I think part of it is sticking with it, is persisting, and being able to see beyond the short term. And I think that that is, is really, really important. Um, in terms of understanding how network marketing works. And what, what advice would you give to somebody that is considering this business that's over 50, say? Over 50, um, that it's a legitimate business. It can lead you to having more options. Um, you have a variety of skills from your life experiences. I think because we're older, we, we have a lot of experience and we can use that in our business and with our products. And I think that that's really important. And in most cases, even though we can be the sandwich generation sometimes, and we are all busy, but I think we do have a little bit more time that we can invest in a business at this stage in life. And I think that that um, is important. Um, and I think um, the other thing I'd say is go for it now. Don't wait. I think a lot of people say, well, maybe I'll consider that later. And I really wish I'd started this much earlier and been able to retire at, you know, even 55 or earlier. Um, like I said, I love my job. I wasn't in a hurry to leave in terms of the job, the, the work that I did. But um, to have that freedom to be able to do more um, later in life, I think is great. So my advice would be not to hesitate to find a product you love, to find a company that your values align with and to check it out. Great advice, I agree. So Sharon, how about you? What do you think is the most important factor that uh, to achieving success in this business? It's just to be patient with yourself and to be patient with the process. So Deb said it very well. It just, it does take time. Um, it's not something that's going to happen overnight and you just trust the process and boy, do I wish I'd stuck with it since 2008, right? So then, you know, I would be looking at a much different picture right now, but I'm very happy where I am and that if you don't have time on a certain day, that's okay because the business keeps working for you. I mean, I too, I moved, I fell and broke my arms and I moved and <laughs> had a ton of things happen last fall. So I didn't put anything into the business and the, you know, the checks kept coming. Um, and now I can continue, you know, the things have settled down to put some time back into the business. So it really can fit with your life. So don't, don't wait. Can I say one more thing that kind of relates to that? Um, I forgot, but I've had a number of friends who are women who are at a later stage of life and things happen. And unfortunately, I've had friends who have been widowed unexpectedly or had a separation happen unexpectedly or had uh, illness in the family and that that wasn't expected. And financially, it's caused a great burden. And again, they've had nothing to turn back on. And I think that's just, again, something to say life is unexpected. And again, to build something for yourself where you might perhaps have um, that extra income to help in a situation like that is really important. Um, I, I've seen it happen to a number of people and um, 
and my heart goes out to them if they're in a situation where they're really strapped. And I think um, that's something to think about as well. I agree. Thank you for adding that. Very important. Yeah, thank you for adding that. And I believe it's that kind of awareness that can help us overcome whatever fears or what's going on in our head about doing this. I mean, like we talked about, we're all learning. And if you are holding back on doing something like this because you don't think you know how to do what it takes to do it, or if you're holding back because you don't wanna be one of what you think is those people, um, those are things that if you, if you're willing to learn and stay, stay youthful in learning new things, you can navigate around them. And, and you don't have to do this the same way as younger people do it. You know, you can find your way of doing this. And as long as you're a raving fan of the products, um, you can figure it out and you've got a community typically that will help you as well. Well, we like to wrap up with on a fun note and just hear about um, kind of what's what you're loving these days. So what is something that you're reading or loving uh, that's making your life easier? It could be anything from a gadget to a book, a recipe, whatever. Uh, and then we also love to hear from you about um, what you're supporting, because we find that people that are in the network marketing business are generous and we generate to be generous. And so we love to just shine a spotlight on what causes are near and dear to your heart. Sharon, let's start with you. What are you loving these days and what are you supporting? What I'm loving these days is trying to embrace living in the winter because normally we would be in Costa Rica, but things have changed. So I've learned to snowshoe. So that's been really oh, exciting for me. That's it's nothing great. to learn, really. It's nothing to learn. You just put snowshoes on and walk, but it's been really cool. And I've gotten to see some places in the winter that I would not otherwise have access to um, in this really very beautiful place that I get to live. Um, and I'm really glad, Laura, that you asked about causes because I would like to bring awareness. It's a local cause in Colorado Springs and it is a homeless shelter for teens. Um, it's called The Place. It used to be part of the Urban Peak group, which is, I, th I don't know if they're national. I think they have, have places na nationally, but what they do is they offer housing for teenagers up to age 21 um, who are homeless, finding themselves on the streets uh, don't have a place to go. They have food, they have groups, they um, have housing. They help these kids transition off the street to um, permanent housing. They have some great statistics. One in three of their people um, in the last end up permanently out of the street, off the oh, street from, from what they do. And so anyway, it's called The Place at theplacecos.org in Colorado Springs. Um, and they just do great work. They even just kind of take backpacks and sleeping bags and go out and just meet the kids on the streets. I mean, you'd be, be shocked at the numbers. Oh, especially in such a cold area. Um, exactly. That is wonderful. That sounds like a wonderful cause. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that with us. Deb, how about you? What's something fun that you're loving these days and what causes do you love? Um, well, we've just, I said, moved into a new home. So it's been really fun to decorate and to pick things and to figure out where things go. That's been a lot of fun. Um, I've also tried to be experimenting a little bit more with cooking and um, I've been um, trying some new bread maker recipes. That's been a lot of fun using, you know, more whole foods and natural um, recipes. And it's been just kind of fun. We found some, some great recipes. Um, and then um, in terms of giving back, um, we love to support a, a number of causes. I'm always feeling like, oh, like they're all good causes. <laughs> so when you get these, you know, um, requests and that, but I, I particularly have a heart for um, human trafficking, sex trafficking of children, that there's a huge um, need there. And, and also for the aftercare services, like you were saying, Sharon, after children have come out of those experiences, those horrendous experiences to have facilities that can um, support them. So certainly that's one of the areas that I like to support and also children with special needs. And that's an area I've worked in for the last um, almost 20 years. And uh, again, there's a lot of needs and particularly in developing countries where they don't have a lot of resources. Um, there's huge needs in, in those areas for equipment and for therapy. And so those are two areas that kind of catch my heart. And one of my hopes is that as I am able to earn more that I can give more and support more of those kinds of things for sure. Oh, I love that. I love that. And so many, so many 
worthy causes that we can make a difference in and having the ability to generate this extra income and whatever that may be for someone to do that is just something that means so much to me. I mean, I've been, you talked about being a six figure earner, that language and stuff. I've been promoting being a six figure giver for years and uh, that can show up in time or money or resources. Um, but I just believe that, you know, to whom much is given, much is required and expected. And we've been greatly blessed and there's a lot of great opportunities for us to give back in. Um, thank you ladies for being with us today. Janine, is there anything else you want to say in closing? I bet there's a lot of people that are in network marketing that are listening to this and wishing that you were their mothers and <laughs> that their mothers were as uh, grateful for this business as you are. I wondered, Deb, it was interesting when you said that your um, daughter hadn't really thought about um, inviting you to her business. And I wonder, she really hadn't thought about it? Not at all. No, wow. she was shocked. In fact, if you know much about network marketing, people are placed and I was placed way down <laughs> in her organization because like she just had no thought, not that I don't think she thought I wasn't able to do it, but absolutely did not feel that I was, would be interested because I was getting so close to retirement and um, it just, it didn't really occur to her. And to be really honest, it absolutely didn't even occur to me um, when I went to that first, first, uh, you know, um, meeting about the product. Well, good. It's, well, it's good that you exemplify that it can turn out well. Yeah. And, and what a powerful message. I mean, anyone that's listening, your parents can be one of your greater supporters. I know, you know, I mean, my kids have my heart. So, you know, where, whatever they're interested in, I mean, heck, this is what got Janine to flip her opinions and her thoughts was because she loved her daughter so much to say, well, maybe I need to reevaluate this, or I'm going to take another look at this. Um, and, and so there's encouraging out there. If, um, if you are a parent and listening to this, um, or a young person listening to this, reach out to your parents and uh, talk about what this could mean for them, especially creating that additional stream of income in retirement too. So, all right, ladies, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.